Speaking of Kalen DeBoer, very quickly as we transition here, uh, Joe, for whatever reason, I guess maybe just any, any stupidity, uh, but there have been some actual people coming out here um, making fun of Alabama recruiting. And, Joe, the biggest question that we had about Kalen DeBoer when he took the job as the next head coach in Alabama was could he recruit and could he recruit in the South? You, you, you're the one who said this. Don't, don't let me admit on this. No, I, I will admit you. Okay. You, okay. you agreed. Don't act like you I, didn't I agree. agreed, but I was far more supportive okay. of DeBoer than you were. Okay. Well, you, more on the field. He has though been doing very well in recruiting. He has so far in the 2025 class 12 four-star commitments per 247 Sports. Some of the top guys, the number four linebacker, Daryl Johnson, uh, number six linebacker, Dawson Merritt, number two safety, Derek Smith, number 14 defensive lineman, Antonio Coleman. I think what really stands out to me, Blake, is the fact that Kalen DeBoer understands where his criticism lies, where a lot of the doubt could have set in early is if he could recruit the defensive side of the football. And you know what he did? He found two tough-ass linebackers, a defensive lineman, a really good safety, some good corners, some big offensive tackles that he's bringing in. I think that, to me, is is already starting to quiet some of the doubters. They need to keep them in the boat. They need to keep them you know, on the, on the ship of, of this team moving forward that want to be a part of the, the future of this program. It's tough to keep these kids committed, committed all the time. You, you know, you go, we have to say that because it just happened with USC. But right now, they're building a really good foundation. I think the biggest part, though, that I'm, I'm very bullish on them is the commitment of Keelan Russell, who won the um, Elite 11 and who has been, if you pay attention in recruiting circles, one of the biggest risers throughout this process. Big, strong. Having a very Tua Tagovailoa type of rise to him. And, refer- yeah. and, and it being the same school in Alabama for this meteoric rise. And more importantly, he's a bigger, stronger, much bigger, stronger athlete than Tua was coming out of high school. So I think that they're able to easily attract whatever whatever offensive weapons and also playmakers like Akeelan Russell is proof that they're going to get those playmakers. But it all does just come down to the one caveat, and I think they'll be fine. But the caveat is, do they keep everybody committed? Because we've seen things turn last second in the past. So I'm going to talk about the positives first. Look, there, myself included, and I will admit where I am wrong here. I did not honestly think that he was going to come in the South and have as much success uh, as he has had early in recruiting. What I did and what me and you talked about, I'm sure that you'll remember this, is I have been very adamant that, listen, just because Alabama Boosters has not had to do what everybody else had to do in recruiting in NIL does not mean that that booster base won't go absolutely nuclear for to be and stay relevant. Joe, they have. And that's just the bottom line that's been helping DeBoer, too. I am shocked that he has done as good as he has. I will admit my faults and my wrongs. I think you bring up the biggest key, though, here. Joe, what's going to start happening when they don't have the success that they normally have been having under Nick? So I could see, hypothetically, Kirby Smart saying to any one of those people up top, hey, man, we're the new big dog. We are the team that runs the SEC now. And those are the things that I think that DeBoer is going to have to defend. Alabama fans, though, are going to step up to the plate when time is called to answer any NIL bells. And I think that what people have always forgotten about that place, they they didn't understand it and they let it – you know, Joe, it's like the – the old wives' tale, like your father tells you these stories and they get passed down generation to generation and people forget Alabama is a place that will spend money to be great, to have excellence. Yeah. Don't let anybody doubt you other than that. I just want to emphasize that when teams start coming in and trying to purge you when you lose a game or two, that's when real SEC recruiting happens. 
Joe, I fully believe that SEC recruiting is different than any other conference, and I don't even think it's remotely close. The war that has happened in the South for both position groups, offense and defensive line, is a war day in and day out. Can Kalen DeBoer sustain that will be my ultimate question. I think you bring up a really good point there where and why I brought up let's see what happens because it is a perfect example of what happened to Billy Napier, and I don't think that DeBoer will have – Literally happened to Billy Napier. He will not have as much of a fall off as Billy Napier because Billy Napier wasn't proven at the Power 5 level like Kalen DeBoer was in terms of production. At the very least, if anything falls off, it's going to be defensive recruiting because we know that they're going to look really good on offense and they're going to be able to keep most of these kids on board offensively. But – as soon as things do go awry, if they do lose a game that they're not supposed to, there will be negative recruiting that will happen. But I'm going to keep saying it. I, I'm i very optimistic, and I think that this is outperforming the expectations that I had certainly this offseason when he took over. Of So if, even you're a little bit surprised. No, no, I'm not surprised because when this transition happened, I you were very adamant about, oh, I don't think he's going to succeed recruiting defensively. And well, I pushed back and yet. said. He's not done yet. I know he's not done yet, but I pushed back and said that I think we haven't seen him with the resources available to him yet, which is why I am optimistic he will figure it out. But I am surprised that he has figured it out this early, and it makes me feel more optimistic that he's going to get it done because he's doing it so quickly and he's built to get, put together such a good foundation. A lot of early coaches can't do this. Joe, I, I look at the Alabama fan base. A lot of them follow me on Twitter. I follow a lot of them on Twitter because mm -hmm. of the hatred that's been had with the school that I cover and them. Joe, I, I have tweets bookmarked here just for the show, not to, like, quote tweet them. Joe, I, I'll just pull a couple. Here's one from Ricky S. on Twitter saying, I got to be honest, I'm a little shocked of what DeBoer is doing. And he spells DeBoer wrong, so they don't even know how to fully spell their coach's last name yet. But I, I do think that there is legitimately people in that own fan base that is a little bit shocked. Joe, they're a top three class at the current moment. And I do think that that has something to say. But we could also be here in December on signing day and the both of us look at each other and say, hey, man, DeBoer lost a lot of shit because he didn't have the season that I think a lot of people thought that they would have. We'll see. Long, long, six months is a long time, brother. Yeah. Bet Online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit. That is a 50% welcome bonus. Bet online where the game starts.